Welcome to Artists in Residences, the Westport Library's virtual artist series. I'm Carol Ergerfass, exhibit curator at the library. In this episode, Migs Burroughs talks with sculptor Zvi Goldman. Zvi calls himself an abstract conceptual sculptor. He's self-taught and started sculpting in 2004 after a career in biological engineering. He works primarily in wood and clay, crafting pieces that are flowing and organic. And perhaps influenced by his professional background, his themes explore the philosophical questions posed by science, human nature, and the natural world. Zvi resists the concept of a series and instead focuses on exploring a new idea with every piece. The result is that each sculpture he makes is one of a kind, with unique views from every direction challenging the viewer to think and be more curious about what surrounds us. Now, let's join in the conversation with Migs and Zvi. Thank you, Carol. I'm pleased to, uh, that we're gonna be able to talk to Zvi Goldman today. Uh, he's uh, an esteemed member of the Artist Collective of Westport uh, and a great sculptor who works in a variety of um, media, I guess, or. I don't know, does that apply to sculptures? It's called media, what's the, or? Uh, yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> materials, a variety of materials, yeah. I guess. Um, so we're gonna uh, get a look at the kind of things you do and how you do them and where you do them, which is fascinating. So um, a little bit about your background. I mean, where, where are you, uh, where did you hail from originally? What, where did you, what's your background? What was your, before you became uh, a sculptor, you said you're self-taught, which means that you didn't choose to be a sculptor, it sounds like, originally. Yeah, it, it actually chose me, I think, <laughs> more than I chose it. Uh, it started early in my childhood. I always loved the feel text and uh, texture and uh, working with wood, um, uh, always like to do things with my hands. I uh, have, I guess, an engineering uh, skills to do that. Um, happened on my career later on. Um, but I actually came to sculpting uh, pretty late after my professional career uh, was kind of uh, coming to fruition, full fruition. I decided to devote more time to sculpting. That was in 2004. And then that's the time that I started to sculpt in earnest, uh, both in wood and then later in clay and later in uh, uh, copper wire. And uh, I keep exploring and trying things. Was your engineering background in materials? I mean, because you have, you have a very, uh, I'd say, sophisticated uh, familiarity with what materials, what their capabilities are. Was that any part of your background? Just uh, more, more like, I guess, uh, putting things together, working yeah. with my hands, uh, being able to develop my own tools. Uh, you know, everybody has their own, you know, secretive uh, tools of, of practice that they uh, actually use on a daily basis. So that really helped me a lot uh, doing that. Uh, my, my uh, background, my formal background is in biological engineering. Uh, so that's the engineering. And the biology side is the natural uh, field for the natural things. Uh, and also a lot of my concepts and idea are coming from science, from engineering, from biology, which I like to put into form and shape. Yeah, well, as we'll see, yeah, you, you definitely explore natural forms and they're very organic looking and feeling and uh, so why don't we get a look uh, at some, I mean, there's a little, there's a couple of pieces behind you, but you could, if you want to uh, walk around a little bit and, and show us or hold something up, I don't know what you've got nearby, anything we can get a, start getting a look at your work. Okay. What's best for you? Um, I'm situated in my uh, workshop downstairs uh so that's where i do some of the uh, winter work clay work i have here a forest of things that i can uh, talk about uh when... slow, slow down a bit slow down a bit we're okay uh, so i'm just giving you a quick tour of uh, the place i'm sitting at yeah 
and coming back uh, to the screen. I guess uh, the way that I love to describe uh, my work is through uh, what I prefer to do and uh, kind of uh, what principles I prefer to uh, follow through in my work. So that's going to be an easy, I guess, uh, way to describe what I do and why I do and then uh, take it from there. Yeah, so what do, when you start a piece, um, maybe, I don't know, could you, is there like the one behind you, is any, could you take one of those maybe and hold it up a little closer to your camera so we can get a feel for the contours There's on that shelf behind you, maybe one of those pieces? No, you could bring it, I mean, oh, if you can't lift it, could you lift it and just bring it right to the, to the, your desktop screen? Yeah, you don't have to use the iPhone for this, but. Yeah, because it gives a sense of scale too. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's nice. And we see the reflections. So that. So that, that, that was uh, really uh, capturing my aspect of engineering, I think. Uh, at the time, I was thinking about our frame of mind, our way of perceiving things, and uh, the way we tackle and comprehend something new that we haven't seen before. So I was trying to put that into, into a sculpture. So in this case, uh, uh, the, the, the body inside, the fish-like body inside is something new, something we haven't seen before. First encounter of something. Yeah. And we try to figure it out, try to figure what it is, why it is, and how, how to classify that into, into our things, of the, of, into our familiarity things. And we try to apply our, you know, old-fashioned frame of thinking, uh, mm. frame of, uh, of, of work, and it doesn't quite work. You see that it bulges from one side, it bulges from the outside, mm. and it doesn't quite fit what we are accustomed to think and perceive, unless you realize that the way to define this little thing, this thing, is to identify a common theme, like a line that goes from one side to the other, goes through, and comes back on the other side. And that's really what characterizes this shape, not our frame of thought. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very observant and to look at things as they are, not as we as we accustomed to look at things or trained to look at things. Just an example yeah. of engineering thought process. Yeah, no, that's a great overview of what, because yeah, originally when I saw you we were bringing it towards the camera, I thought, is it a fish, is it a bird? And I'm trying right. to I'm trying to analyze you know it's got a looks like a beak or a snout or a thing and then I said yeah but it doesn't have wings <laughs> it doesn't have gills it does, what it, you know and you're right it's fascinating we we were sort of bound by you know defined predefined notions of what things should look like um, and it's breaking out it's breaking out of that framework correct I mean we, we have to look at things as they are not mm. as we are trained to look at things. Uh, a table is a table only if we accept it to be a table. A tree is a tree only if we accept it to be a yeah. tree. And likewise. Yeah, we are kind of slaves to definitions. Like if it doesn't fit that, then it must be that. But why can't it be something brand new, like as you said? Um, well, maybe this is a good time to look at some of your work through these slides. Is that okay? Or do you want to, is there anything more? Around you that you want to sh hold up, or sure, we can we can go by the uh, my preference. It's going to be easy structure to show things and discuss one one thing at a time. Okay, this is uh, now this sh <laughs> shed looks awful tiny in that picture, but then it, it, then the inside yeah. picture is a little more expansive there. Yeah, that that is my workshop outdoor. I have um, a very small shed, uh, eight by ten. Uh, I had a choice at the time of making it bigger, but I deliberately wanted it to be smaller. As you can see, I like putting myself in the middle of things that I can reach everything, you know, <laughs> mm. within one arm length. So the shed is eight by 10, very small, but I have really everything that I need to. Um, I use a lot of uh, small power tools like Dremel, but I use also some hand uh, chisel and, and saws and stuff. Um, uh, so you can see everything is really around me. Um, you know, is that a welding? Uh, are you a welder? Is there a, is that a welding helmet or a, a no, shield? No, no, oh. just a shield against flying debris and, and oh, oh, stuff okay. like this. No, I don't do, I don't do welding. 
I do gluing, I do uh, epoxy clay, uh, uh, putting things together. But no, I haven't mastered yet the welding, maybe uh, to be. <laughs> okay, something to come. So here's, now we have a, this is, you say, my home gallery studio, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Houston, we have a problem because I've ran out of space at home. <laughs> uh, uh, you uh, you can see from the bits and pieces that we try to uh, make it look nice, but actually, we 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 captive uh, all possible even the rafters uh, on the roof and stuff uh, that uh, hangs on the uh, hangs from from the ceiling stuff. So it it gives my home a cozy sense. Um, Here's a close up. Yeah, it's a close up, right? So you see some uh, reliefs on the right side with pictures, some some other things on the top of the uh, bookcase. Um, my wife has really uh, a good sense of uh, decorating, and her job is a job. She likes to do it every week. She rearranges stuff around so it looks new. It looks fresh new. A lot of uh, material to work around, and I notice it's interesting. You know, when you see any piece of artwork by itself, um, it's one thing, and then then you see it in a gallery next to other artwork, and they, you know, they use the phrase they're having a conversation. But I've never heard artwork talk <clears throat> <laughs> literally, but uh, but they do. They too, and in this way, in in this sense, it, it, they well, they complement each other. They they the shapes, you know, either well complement or conflict not you know with each other challenge each other if they're like dancers to me it's like three you know free form dancers on a stage yeah 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 uh the one on the left it's called expectations uh it shows uh a to me at least a figure of a pregnant woman and the expectation of things to come the expected uh new thing into the world uh, the middle one is a cycle that we see around us, a cycle of, uh, from chaotic to order, back to chaos and stuff. And the one on the right, um, I did it in a spirit of optimism at a time when I thought that uh, as, um, as a species, we are heading the right direction. <laughs> uh, right now, uh, we have our own doubts whether uh, we yeah. listen carefully to the environment. Those are the years listening around. And I have my second thoughts whether uh, we uh, we are doing in the code and going the right way. But one common denominator for uh, some uh, most of my work is uh, the flow and the line and the contour. Uh, I guess I'm a sucker for flowing lines. Mm. Everything needs to be connected. Everything needs to be to make sense uh, statically. Yeah, they're very complex shapes. Now, are they one, like the three pieces sitting on top of the, the little cabinet there, are they, is, is that all one piece? Are they all, each one is one piece of, of wood? Yeah, or? each one of them is an individual uh, piece, the one on the left. Yeah. But, but uh, I mean, are they one piece, are, are they assembled? Uh, each, is each piece a, a freestanding carved piece with you know or, or do you glue pieces together oh, no no they are they are one piece each one of them is one piece mm -hmm. yeah uh, well yeah uh i had to fix some of them for example the, the one in the middle with the drop uh falling yeah. down uh it was too sensitive it was too <laughs> uh. too prone to broke so i had to instill a metal rod inside so the only time for that little piece uh, that I had to introduce another uh, outside component besides wood. Right, but I mean, just so people appreciate uh, what they're looking at, it, it's because it, it, very complex shapes. I mean, uh, that you couldn't you you couldn't even do this on a computer if you wanted to. I mean, you couldn't design. I don't think that's something like that. Uh, anyway, they're they're phenomenal, and this they are they they're carved. They they're basically just carved and yeah, they carved out of wood. And then, um, you know, sometimes all, all three of them, it's a good example of, uh, I'm a concept driven person. So I have to uh, uh, perceive something that I want to say. And then I have to think about what's the best way to do it, uh, wood or clay or something. And then uh, once you start to do that, uh, you often some find yourself uh, moving up and down, right to left from your original concept mm. and let the wood dictate to you what needs to be done. Uh, for example, uh, on the piece on the right, I just noticed those um, eyes, if you can see in the middle, 
right yeah. exactly yeah so i had to i had to um make it into a a funnel going outside versus other options that i thought about the time so it's a continuous conversation between what the wood tells you versus your concept what you want to do it's constant give and take mm. amazing okay well go let's try another one another look here i have to make fit all this in here okay so yeah this is example of uh the the breadth of things that i uh explored over time and i guess my message is uh keep on learning keep on uh uh exploring um my my tendency is not to do a series of things not to do replicate not to repeat mm. and try to uh, perfect something uh, and spend uh, more time doing something similar. But every time branch into a new project. So from left to right, uh, that's uh, a line driven wood. It's called uh, parenthood. It shows the relationship between two sides, two branches, and then a middle one, which is the offspring and different relationship between uh, son and mother and son and father, for example. Uh, the one on the top is relationship. Um, that's a solid volume piece of wood that uh, actually um, it, it's supposed to trick you, the uh, the audience. Typically, when you look at something, you look at the center of things, and that things kind of uh, forces you to look at the outskirt, at the uh, profile. But then you start to notice there are some eyes, and there are pairs mm. looking one at each other, and it brings you back to the center. So there's a tension there. Yeah. The one below that, uh, it, it's example of um, the one below that is example of uh, a combination of material. I call it self awareness. Like, you know, we, we all have uh, a little, you know, a little, a little um, um, replica of ourselves sitting at the back of our, our mind and, mm -hmm. and look through our eyes and examine through our eyes. So that's a little eye at the back, and then it looks through those oh. uh, these holes in, in, in the mask. Uh, so that's the perception, at least my perception of uh, what self-awareness is, having something at the back of your mind, always looking through you at the outside world. Uh, then the example of uh, one heart, that's, uh, that, um, that's an external piece, used to be a whipping cherry tree, a beautiful tree, that unfortunately died in my garden and I had I made it into something uh, that remind me that tree uh, all the time. You see two people and one heart, so that's... So it was uh, still rooted in the ground when you carved it. Yes, yeah, it's wow. still in the ground, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I do also um, reliefs and you see the two face, uh, one of uh, my earlier work. Uh, and the, um, the challenge there was how to draw two faces, one in profile and one in uh, frontal look, without lifting the hand from the pencil once. Mm. So, mm. Uh, so that's the results. Uh, on the right of it, uh, an example of uh, uh, clay, of resin clay. Uh, it's called a central node. Um, and the idea was something from quantum physics. I'm not going to go into that. But uh, the the artistic uh, static of it, uh, it really what uh, kept uh, me. Uh, right of that, uh, you see work with um, copper wire. Uh, it's called uh, caught in time, like somebody caught in a web of time and frozen in time and stuff. And uh, at the bottom left of it, uh, the two fish. Uh, that was a discarded, uh, burned piece of wood that I found in the lake. And I thought that I saw something in that and that became two fish. And to mm. me, I guess the message is maybe better uh, having a company of somebody versus be alone with a head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, curious, um, where do you, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the idea, the, idea the, the message here, at least uh, to me is Keep on trying. Keep on keep on exploring. Uh, to me, I I don't want to waste right now time on trying to perfect things and do a series of things. They'll come. That's that's going to come maybe later in life when I'm exhausted out of fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. Before we can, uh, where do you source? Like you can talk about this piece, expressions, which I love. But 
where do where do you get the wood? Is there where do you source the different blocks of wood? Or uh, I have uh, friends who know uh, what I do, and they provide me some wood. I go uh, and buy wood from lumberyard, uh, and um, that's that's my source. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe and maybe thank you for making the point. Uh, 10 years ago, I thought that, you know, to make something special, you have to go to and use exotic woods and yeah. stuff that uh, really, uh, you, pay, you pay a lot, B, um, it matters, uh, it's being uh, done in the expense of living tree uh, in, in, in some uh, exotic forest someplace. So I, I didn't want to do that. So right now, um, uh, I'm concept driven and the choice of wood is really secondary to the concept and the final aesthetic. So for example, um, the one uh, on the left side, which is the expression, the type of wood that you see here uh, at the top, the, the top two la layers mm -hmm. of our wood, uh, the middle one is uh, mahogany and the bottom two are poplar wood. So these are not uh, mm. any exotic uh, wood or any special grain, but putting them together to fit a concept, that what uh, was important to me. Um, so the idea here is micro expressions, but it's very hard to do micro expressions uh, with wood because they last less than a second and they're <laughs> very, very minute. So I resorted to do expressions. So this piece, uh, I have the, I have the, um, I have the, the, the project in front of me so I can play with it. But uh, oh, you do? Can we switch back? Do you have the real yeah. one? Yeah. So there are actually three different sets oh. of expressions. Oh, yeah. And then on top of it, like three different noses, three different eyes, and so forth. And if you want to make your own combination, you know the game that you kind of uh, switch stuff around? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let me bring it like this. So you can switch and have that expression with different eyes and different nose or maybe you want to switch the foreheads to change the forest so, so that's definitely where engineering comes in handy yeah. that's right that's right <laughs> so that that was pretty challenging because it had to match every nose <laughs> had, had to match uh, uh all faces around so that was fun and the one to the right which uh it looks very is that laminated i mean there's so many different uh okay yeah that's example of uh going after a very 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 special wood uh some call it uh the american zebra hood but i call it plywood <laughs> <laughs> plywood all right it is plywood actually is it okay yeah yeah it, and yeah, it does look exotic. I mean, that, well, now it's got that, like, what do they call the clownfish? It has that, the clownfish have that that's uh, right. coloration, yeah. That's right. So the idea here was um, stepping down. That was at the time that I decided to retire my, uh, my, my job and do, uh, that was two years ago. And I was uh, thinking about leaves coming down of the tree. And uh, that gave me the idea that, you know, Stepping down, it's a good thing when you do it on your own time and terms. Mm. So we've seen, we saw this one, the stepping down. Um, uh, what is the wild, um, what material is, is, what's it called? Wild garden. Wild garden. What material is that? <laughs> That's uh, uh, epoxy clay. Oh, okay. And uh, you see that is a nest and things are growing in the nest. Uh, there is uh, humanity is growing. And at the same time, those little wires are supposed to be viruses uh, that are all around us. Mm. So of course, mm. the, the natural background to this concept was COVID-19 and what we're going through. But it's important to realize that uh, viruses have been with us throughout humanity and we incorporate some of them in our own genetic structure. So it's part of the environment that we have to learn how to live in. I guess. Yeah, exactly. I, okay. I uh, wish we'd spend more time on all of them. This one, I like that we can, this one actually is, uh, has motion. We can, on the yeah. slide. Again, so, so uh, I, I'm trying to avoid symmetry and redundancy as, as a play, because to me, if something is symmetric, 
then one side has all the information that can mm. be conveyed and the other side will be redundant. So I have two examples. One is the olive wood, the one hand, uh, and you'd say, yeah, but it didn't start, you didn't start with a symmetric uh, piece, but I could have made it, attempt to make it more symmetrical. But the other one, the one that is rotating was uh, the, the concept of scale. I don't know if you can see that well, mm. um, there are three scales that you can, see, you can see. The base is something that moves very fast. I mean, circles are moving very fast. So this is the micro scale. And the top things, that the heavens, the stars are move very slow. And in the middle, this is the scale of us. And my little question is, how significant are we? Yeah. <laughs> Giving all that scale from the very, very small and a very, very large. So... The scale is 10 to the power, but the whole scale is 10 to the power 46. It's, we are someplace in the middle, but mm. we perceive both sides. We perceive the very small and we perceive the very high, which makes us, I guess, makes us, I guess, important to some degree. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like, I don't know, running on a, running down the aisle of a plane that's going 600 miles an hour and we're only going four miles an hour. And exactly, yeah. exactly. That's a good analogy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see, here's another couple we've got. Um, maybe just briefly. Uh, yeah, uh, just to demonstrate the line in contour is very important to me. Uh, the left one is called a question mark. Uh, and you see the lines, uh, when I don't have to spend too much time on it. The parenthood, uh, we talked about that already. So this okay. version is made out of clay. I have two versions sometimes. I want to try to see things both in clay and in wood. And that's the only extent I'll replicate the concept. I guilty as charged when it comes to that. <laughs> the, the one on the, on the right side uh, called uh, fractal S. Mm -hmm. Fractals are small structure in nature that repeats itself in different scale. But the same mini structure remains the same uh, when you grow up or when you bring, the, bring up the picture to a larger scale. In this case, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a figure, it's a figure S, and all the components inside are made of little wires that are bent with an S shape. So it's a, it's a... Yeah, I think I can see this, yeah. So it's, it's the idea you use an elementary spatial component and you combine it in a way that the, uh, that the outcome is still maintain the same shape of in this case the letter s mm. but it's made out of smaller component who are bearing the same structure right yeah there's a lot of gives it a continuity uh let me reduce this down um yeah and another character Another characteristic of yeah. what I'm trying to do is to incorporate the base into the structure. So there are two ways to do it. One, the base can be complementary. Uh, and the other way, it could contrast the, uh, this, the, uh, mm. uh, the, the project itself. Uh, on the complementary side, the left one is called Bereshit, which is the genesis, which is the uh, spark that started everything. And then it starts to move around and about uh, uh, from that point. So the base is part of the structure. Likewise, the human sail, pregnant woman, that's, that is like a uh, sailboat sailing in life. And the, you know, the, pregnant, uh, the pregnancy is the, uh, the sail that pushes us forward in life. And the base is a wave. So this is a complementary approach, a contrasting approach. Uh, one example would be a circular view which shows there is a completely connection between the infinite and the very small. And I wanted to contrast that flow with something that has junction in it. So that's, and hence the base is more of a junction point rather than uh, a continuous slope. And flowering, I wanted to contrast the top, which is like a flowering uh, structure from the base or the base, which is very digital and hard. It looks like, um, uh, city line uh, when you look inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's power through. We saw these. This was in another. Well, this one turns. Let me let me do the uh, the rotation. Yeah, like you said, at the profile, you think you're seeing one thing, and then it turns, and yeah, it's great. You see a profile. Right. 
you first look at the profile because that comes to play and then sure. you notice there are eyes and some relationship between two pairs and you say hmm what do they say what do they mean why they why they look at one another that yeah. way <laughs> yeah a fantastic okay let me uh quickly and, go to, to these and um uh, I think that I'm, I'm not trying to seek perfection. Uh, deep down, I don't believe uh, in perfection, I guess. Uh, so things has to be done to the point that uh, your concept is conveyed and the aesthetic level to some degree is satisfied. Mm. Uh, the one on the, on the left is layer and I maintain the bark of the wood itself and it's pretty coarse and rough um, and it's not smooth and nice. Uh, outlier, uh, there's an outlier piece, the one in dark shade in the middle of the structure. Uh, and again, I maintain the bark uh, as part of the structure. And uh, the one on the right side, uh, that was a discarded piece of olive wood that was mm. completely rotten and everything. And I just removed the parts that were uh, falling apart, basically, and let the uh, wood slowly uh, reveal itself. And I saw a nursing uh person and uh at the bottom here i see a little baby and uh the headless mother in this case <laughs> yeah the great well and and you just re you know you reveal the the beauty of the wood itself to serve to serve your great. intent there you know you made yeah. a comment we have one more slide but, and we have to go but uh you made a comment about per you don't uh strive to achieve perfection and i read once you know these chinese elderly Chinese ivory carvers who spend sometimes a year carving, you know, uh, ivory eggs within an egg, within an egg, within an egg. And they supposedly deliberately put a flaw, uh, make a, a mistake or deliberately put a flaw in the piece because to create perfection would offend the gods because only gods are capable of perfection. So this, this, is, this is very interesting, very interesting. And I, I, I can relate to that to me. Uh, the reason why I do not go and try to perfect something by making another one and another something, it's going down the rabbit hole. I mean, you yeah. go to places that mean something to you, but you completely lost everybody else. They don't care. They don't see the differences anyhow. And if I have to think about what am I uh, to spend my time, start a new concept, a new project that is very exciting or improve another percent, one percent of something that only I can see, the mm -hmm. choice is very obvious. Yeah, no, that's a nice, that's a great approach. Um, so then we'll wrap it up with these. Um, again, every one is so different. You know, they defy definition or cat categorize cat category. Um, well, that's a compliment, and I appreciate it. Yeah, no. So you showed us that's one you held up the theories, the one the the, the bird fish uh, in framed in a yeah trying to trying to break out of a frame or a frame trying to contain it rather. Um, and then the weed, is that clay also? Yeah, that's clay. Um, yeah, just to make the point that you really need to love what you do and do what mm. you love, not be try to be populist, not try to be, mm. you know, like the one that you mentioned, I was mowing the grass and then I'm, I'm catching myself, what am I doing? Uh, I'm destroying huh. natural flora, beautiful flowers in the grass and they are kind of cut down in the middle in just to preserve a simple blade of simple plant because this is how we believe the grass or the lawn should look like. I found it to be really uh, <laughs> um, yeah. interesting. Oh, and the one next to it is yeah. uh, Conquering Earth. Uh, we, humanity, are kind of are holding Earth in a way that we start to deform and destruct it. People see other things in that too, and that's okay. Uh, and the one on the right side, uh, it's the quantum knowledge. The final knowledge that we know about things is, do they exist or do they not exist? And that has, you know, this, this is believed to be uh, the state of the quantum theory, blah, blah, blah. But there's something beyond it. Some, something is really ramming that concept mm. with another thinking that it's not yet ready to come to fruition, my thinking. Well, I'm going to switch back to you so we can say goodbye formally here. But that, that was just a wonderful tour. And uh, your house is like, a you know, <laughs> I mean, you should just have a turnstile at your front door and have people pay. 
pay to walk through. Um, that's phenomenal. So I thank you for your time and, and letting us and sharing your work uh, so I close. I appreciate it. And thank you uh, for the opportunity to show some of my work and the rest of it can be seen on my website or... Yeah, where's your, why don't you say your website? What? Okay, it's uh, my name, zvigoldman.com. Great. Well, I hope they do. Um, and we'll catch up again soon. Thanks, Thanks. a lot. Have a good day. Stay healthy and do yeah. well. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, V, for sharing some of your thoughts about your creative process and also for showing us that picture of your shed. It's amazing to think how much creativity comes out of that tiny little space. To see more of our Artists in Residences series, check out the library's YouTube page, Westport Pub Lib and search for the Artist in Residence playlist. Thanks, and hope to see you at the library again soon.